I never planned on writing a book. Um, I used to write like silly short stories when I was a teenager in school because I didn't want to do my schoolwork. <laughs> so I would sit at my desk and I would just write funny stories that I thought was, you know, it was humorous to me. So a few months before I wrote my book, I found those stories and they were tucked away in some filing cabinet. I read them to my kids. My kids thought they were hilarious. They just, they loved them. And it just kind of sparked that like creative side of me again, because especially when you're a mom and I'm a stay at home mom, you kind of lose your identity and you you lose like, oh, I, I used to do that. I used to have these hobbies. And it's like, now you're just consumed with your children, your family and your duties here at home. You know, I don't really think about things I used to do so that kind of like reignited that in me just like that silly creative side of me that I've always had so that was part of it the other part of it was if there's a lot of indoctrination and a lot of uh, things being pushed in our kids faces I mean literally we were watching something on TV and a commercial came on and it was the last second of the commercial. They just threw something in it that I did not want my kids to see. And it sparked a lot of questions from my kids. And I was like, I hate that. And so I felt this need to have pure, innocent content for our kids where you don't have to, the parents don't have to hover and be like, oh my gosh, like what's in this? Let me read, let me pre-read the book first, you know? And I just, I wanted that for my own kids. So when I wrote the book, I honestly only wrote it with the intentions of keeping it on my laptop and reading it to my kids. Okay, everybody, welcome to Living the Next Chapter. I have somebody with a, a very nice name, by the way. Uh, it's a, a author, she has written a children's book. It's all going to take us to a very special place, heaven. Ari is with me. Ari, Ari Field is with me. Ari, welcome to the podcast. How are you? Ah, thank you for having me. So I gave you some homework when we had met a while back to check out a music yes. video. Did you do your homework? I did do my homework. As soon as I got off the video with you, I did my homework. And I could understand, I could understand the connection that you were making, yeah. Okay, so it was Stephen Curtis Chapman, Heaven in the Real World, and it had mm -hmm. kids in it, it had all this stuff, right? And when you were yeah. talking to me, I had this song just in the back of my head going, tell her about this song, and, and you checked it out, and I'm glad you did. What were your thoughts about that video when you saw that? I really liked it. I didn't see the actual like music video, it was like a lyric video. So I did okay. I don't know if I saw the same one as you, but I liked the words. I liked the song. I liked what it was talking about, you know, about having Yeah. Um what does it say? I mean, there was one line, it was like Jesus, the hope for heaven or something like that, about Jesus being yeah. heaven in the real world. Like so yeah, yeah, I thought it was a very good connection to what I wrote. <laughs> See, I love it. So I'm glad. I'm glad we have a we have a common bridge between the two of us. I'm a huge fan of Stephen Curtis Chapman, and again, when you were talking in our pre-interview, everything you were saying just took me back to that song. So I'm glad we got to share that together. Uh, and the whole concept of heaven being this vague, distant place, nobody's really sure what it's like, and then to try to translate that in for children so that they understand the concept of heaven and how that impacts everyday life. You've written a book called What Does Heaven Look Like? And I would love to jump back. Let's go back to the beginning of the story. Why did you write this book? Like, what was the, what, why did you get up one day and go, I need a book about heaven for, for kids? I never planned on writing a book. Um, I used to write like silly short stories when I was a teenager in school because I didn't want to do my schoolwork. <laughs> so I would sit at my desk and I would just write funny stories that I thought was, you know, it was humorous to me. That was pretty much it. So a few months before I wrote my book, I found those stories and they were tucked away in some filing cabinet. I read them to my kids. My kids thought they were hilarious. They just, they loved them. And so then my kids actually started writing little funny stories and reading them to me. And it just kind of sparked that like 
creative side of me again because especially when you're a mom and I'm a stay at home mom, um, it you kind of lose your identity and you you lose like oh I I used to do that I used to have these hobbies and it's like now you're just consumed with your children your family and your duties here at home you know I don't really think about things I used to do so that kind of like reignited that in me just like that silly creative side of me that I've always had um so that was part of it the other part of it was if there's a lot of indoctrination and a lot of uh things being pushed in our kids faces I mean literally we were watching something on tv and a commercial came on and it was the last second of the commercial they just threw something in it that I did not want my kids to see and it sparked a lot of questions from my kids and I was like I hate that and so I felt this need to have pure innocent content for our kids where you don't have to, the parents don't have to hover and be like, oh my gosh, like what's in this? Let me re, let me pre-read the book first, yeah. you know? And I just, I wanted that for my own kids. So when I wrote the book, I honestly only wrote it with the intentions of keeping it on my laptop and reading it to my kids. And then it just, nice, yeah. And then after I wrote it, it was like, oh, it would be so cool if I could have pictures to this book. So I was like, well, let me try to find an illustrator. And then it just kind of went one step further and one step further until it was an actual published book. And now I get to share it with not only my kids, but other kids around the world, which is really exciting to me. <laughs> when did the book come out? Uh, it was published August 31st. So it's, re- it's relatively a new book. And what's the response oh, yeah. been so far? Um, I mean, I feel like it's been good so far. I mean, I haven't sold like thousands of copies or anything like that, like especially being a self-published author, it's pretty, pretty difficult. You know, there's a lot of learning curves and a lot of things that I had to just figure out on my own. Um, And then the marketing part of it is really difficult, but it's honestly, I didn't write it expecting to get rich off of it or anything like that. I just, I wanted, like I said, I wanted it for my kids. And then if I could get it into any other kids past that, that's fantastic. I feel good about it. You know, I don't really have like this um, expectation on it of like, oh, I need to sell this X amount of copies or like reach this amount of people because then it just makes me like yeah. it takes away the pure creativity from it, from me. It makes it more like a stress and an anxiety rather than a creative expression and a creation like an artwork. You know what I mean? That and that's that's how I feel yeah. about it. <laughs> Isn't it exciting when somebody reads your book and gives you feedback? Like, what does that mean for you? Oh, yeah, that's incredible. Okay, so when I get feedback from family, that's awesome. That's great. But when I get feedback from strangers, it's they're telling me things that I never would have thought to hear. Like, I've had several strangers <laughs> tell me that they bought this book for their child because they lost a sibling, whether it was a miscarriage or a child that died really young. And so they bought this book for their sibling to kind of help them with their grieving process. And I'm like crying as I'm reading these comments and these messages. And I'm like, I I never, ever, ever would have even thought that this book could help in that situation. You know, like it's just, yeah, it's honestly you know, all glory to God. And I just put all of it in his hands and whoever it reaches is incredible. It's incredible to me. I'm just so thankful to be a part of it. Talking about reviews, I'm on your Amazon page right now. I'm looking at your reviews and you have Mm -hmm. some amazing reviews from people who have bought your book. So I love to do this once in a while. So if you're listening, if you're like, yeah, uh, okay, you're talking reviews and how important they are. They are important, and I'm looking at them on my phone at the moment. So Corbin, she's at, or this person is at Thrifty Swifty, writes, we purchased this book for our toddlers, and it's been an adorable <laughs> favorite in our home. It's easy to see how much thought went into the details of the pictures and encouraging Aww. message. It helps paint a picture for kids about heaven and how God sees us. It's a must in every home. 
Oh wow, that that's so good. I love it. Wow, <laughs> right? Okay, that's one. That's one, and it's a five star review, which is great. Uh, Heidi Cook, also a five star review. The title of her uh, review says "Beautiful Art and Wonderful Story." So she says, "My five year old sat still for the whole book, for the whole story. He loved hearing answers to his questions about what heaven is like." We lost several family members this year, and this was the perfect book to read through those hard seasons. Wow. Beautiful art, thoughtful storytelling. See, that's exactly what I mean. I mean, I'm getting these this feedback of people that are using this book as like a gap in their grieving of loss and trying to, to bring heaven closer and where it's not like this far distant place, but it's like a, a reality. And it, it, that just blows my mind that it's even helping people like that. That's amazing. I never thought that it would do something like that. You know, that is, that is so cool. <laughs> and I love how humble it, the story is about how it was created. You didn't get up one day and say, I want to be a published author and be rich and famous. And I'll write anything I can to be famous. Yeah. You're like, I wrote this for my kids. And it just started yeah. <laughs> from a humble place. So right there, there's, there's an innocence and a purity about how the book was written from the start. And that would carry through the process of writing the book. And then your readers are going to feel that because you're not selling something. You're you're here to tell a story to help people. Yeah. Exactly. And see, I'm so happy that you said right? that because those are the words that I use when I'm describing my book and this, describing the reason why I wrote it. I want purity, innocence, for mm. the children of the world, not just my children, all children. They deserve to have pure, innocent content that is enjoyable, that's cute, that's fun, silly, you know, whatever it may be. They deserve that without indoctrination, without corruption, without defilement, being snuck into their content that they're enjoying. It yeah. needs to just be pure. And so I love that. I love that you said that because that is exactly my intention. And um, mm -hmm. you're right. It did just kind of snowball into this thing that I wasn't even intending for it to be in the first place, which which is so cool. It really is. I'm just I'm just very thankful. I'm very thankful to have. I'm the first person in my family that's ever published a book. Like I'm the first person that I know who's ever published a book. And so it's just it's really cool. I feel accomplished. I feel thankful. I feel proud, but not like in a prideful way you know what i mean it's just, i'm humbly proud yeah. okay so take me to the moment when you open the front door and there's a box on the step and in this box it's addressed to you in this box is the first copies of your book oh take me God. out to the doorstep take me out there in that day so go back there in your mind okay and now take me through the process okay you open the door Okay, I'm, I'm imagining this for you. You can fix this for me. You open the door, and there's the box. What happens? Tell me what. Explain it all. I oh, want to share. I want to hear all of it. It was cool. so oh. cool. So I open the package, and I see it. And as soon as I see just the cover, I'm just like, ah, this is a real tangible thing in my hand. Like, what? This is so cool. That was the coolest part of the whole entire process was having these images and these ideas in my head, I knew exactly what I wanted the pictures to look like. Having all of it in my head and then having it brought to life into an actual tangible product in front of me. I mean, art, literal art. It was amazing. It was the most mm -hmm. amazing artistic expression of my life. Like this, this creation is so, um, it's so humbling and it's just so, it was so exciting. Like, when I opened the package, I was just like, I flipped through all the pages. I read it. You know, obviously I was making sure everything was correct, but also I'm just like ooing and on at, oh my gosh, look how good it looks. Like, look at the pictures. They look so good. They look exactly like they were in my head. And I was just freaking out. I called my husband immediately and I was like, ah, I got my book. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> it was just so cool. It really is so cool. Like I do paintings sometimes and it's kind of the same of like you have this thing in your head and then you get it out and then it's like in front of you and that's amazing. But this was, I mean, several steps further than that. The, this, the book was just so 
the artistic process and the creative process of the whole thing because it wasn't just my creativity it was an illustrator coming into my world and partnering with me and her making the art and creating all of it with me it was so cool I, I can't wait to do another one honestly it, it's so exciting <laughs> all right so let's give up some shout outs and props to your illustrator tell me a how you found yeah. this person and Let's brag about them for a little bit. They've added so much to the story and the journey. Let's yes, shine absolutely. the spotlight on them. Like, talk about them a little bit. I found her on this app called Thumbtack. And it's just an app of any random job that you could need. A painter for your house or a handyman or whatever. You can search any job on there. And you'll find people that offer their services. Well, I found her name is Janine Corcoran. And her, her name is on the front of my book down at the bottom. It says illustrated by Janine Corcoran. Um, I found her on there. She is so sweet. She was absolutely amazing to work with. She did a beautiful job on the, on the pictures. The illustrations are beautiful. They're exactly what I wanted. And she was just so professional and she was so, um, she's just so kind. She was so kind. She, she was just so like, Precious. I don't know. <laughs> and yeah. um, she did such a wonderful job. She not only illustrated, but she also formatted my book for me because I had no clue how to do any of that. So mm -hmm. there was one night that she stayed up with me till like 1230 at night and we're just going back and forth. It was all done over the phone because she I think she lives in California. Um, so we did everything over the phone, but she stayed up with me till like 1230 trying to get the formatting right because the um, it wasn't accepting the files. So we had to just keep redoing and redoing and redoing. And she never got impatient. She never got flustered. She never was anything but completely professional and sweet and like <laughs> assuring me because I was getting frustrated. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's not going to work. Like we've come this far and now I, I can't get it to go through. And she's like, it's okay. We're going to get it. It's going to work. We're going to work at it, however long it takes. And she was just so great. She was amazing. Okay, so I have a special request. Can I can I ask something? Can you, uh, you yeah. have the book there in front of you. Please show it again, first of all. I love when authors show their book because the smile on your face and the light in your eyes, you're like, this is my book. <laughs> ah! um, like, this is this my is baby. I made so can that. you please open this book somewhere <laughs> yes. in the book? And can you read a short little passage to us from the book? Anywhere you like, sure. anywhere you like. But the reason I'm asking is awesome. to hear this through your voice as the author. I think it means so yeah. much to people mm -hmm. listening to get a little taste of your book. But to hear it through your inflection and your voice and you're the creator of this book. So I just I would like to share a little passage with everybody. Give a little bit, everybody a little taste of it. If you don't mind anything you like, okay. I'll leave it up to you. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to read this page. I think that this illustration is absolutely mm, it's beautiful. Great. It's one of my favorites. Um okay, I'm going to try to read this upside <laughs> down or maybe I can do it like this. <laughs> okay. Heaven looks like beauty. Blooming flowers in springtime, the ocean, mountains too. Green grass, blue skies, the warm sun shining down on you. Our God is such an artist. His work is all around. Wherever you see beauty, his fingerprints are found. He's colorful and wonderful. Creation sings in joy of how God brought heaven down to earth for his children to enjoy. There it is. And that is kind of, in a nutshell, what the book is about. I've had some people who haven't, they didn't even read the back of the, the book explaining what it was about. They just saw the title. What does heaven look like? And they're like, oh, you don't know what heaven looks like. I'm like, I'm not saying I do. You didn't even read the explanation of the book. It's about putting heaven into a here and now perspective. Obviously, we don't know what heaven looks like, heaven's yeah. place. But when we, if we're Christians, then we are carriers of heaven because we're carriers of God. We're carriers of his presence and his kingdom. And also when he was crucified and he tore the veil. Mm -hmm. He brought that closeness where we don't have to wait for heaven to have that closeness and that intimacy with God or his presence or his glory. And the earth is our gift. And he did put heaven here on the earth for us, his children, to enjoy. 
And um, so I kind of go through little scenarios or little ex- little explanations in the book of things that I teach my own kids before I wrote the book of of the importance of like, okay, yes, we love one another, but what is that actually, what are we doing when we love one another? We're showing them, we're showing them God, we're showing them heaven. When you show love to someone else, you're showing them heaven. When you show, um, when you're, when you're laughing and you're enjoying and you're just in the pure, the pureness of joy, you are experiencing and reflecting a part of heaven you're experiencing and reflecting a part of God's nature and God's heart in you and through you so I just go through little examples like that of how it I'm just hoping that it bridges the gap between the distance that we might feel between us and God or us and the spiritual things or heaven or you know whatever it may be and those are things that i stress to my kids that it's important that you live close you live in that closeness Mm. that intimacy with god all of your life because you are a carrier of heaven because you are a carrier of god and you express that and you show that and you reflect that to everyone around you okay so there's so that's pretty much what i'm so Er, Er, there's going to be people that resonate with what we're talking about they're completely with us they understand they support they believe they have a good concept of heaven and how to how to live a life that honors the future of heaven in for us as humans. But there's also a part of the population area that don't really follow this or they're in a different faith group or they have no faith at all. Um, how can a book like this help them? Is This book is not just for one segment of the population. This could teach people and help people. How can this book extend beyond the audience you originally wrote it for and help them as well? Well, that's a good question. And I I think that that's obviously, yes, there are people out there that are, you know, they don't believe in God. They don't believe in heaven. They don't believe in anything after death. There's also a lot of people out there that I know personally that say they don't believe in God. They don't believe in religion. They don't believe in anything. But then when they have a loved one pass or something, they always say, well, heaven gained another angel or they'll say things like that, um, which I think is a good foot in to to them not being so opposed to a book like this. I'm not trying to push my beliefs on anybody. I'm not trying to push religion on anyone. I just I think that it's a book that offers. um I don't know. I like, I'm just trying to teach good attributes, I guess, of things that we need to be showing other people on just a normal day to day basis in our life, the way that we should be viewing like a new perspective of our lives here on earth, I guess. And I, I think that's a good question though, yeah. of, of, because I do know that as soon as you read the title, it immediately comes off as a religious book, a Christian book, you know? Yeah. And so it does make yeah. me wonder if that's going to turn away the people that aren't religious or aren't Christian. And I don't really know what they would think about it, honestly. I don't know if they read it, if it would be offensive to them or if they would even receive it well at all. I really don't know. <laughs> so I'll give you an example, Ari. Like I actually work a night shift and I get to listen to podcasts at work. And one of my coworkers, her name is Kathy. Mm-hmm. Hi, Kathy. She's going to hear this podcast. She, <laughs> she came up to me once and I had somebody on and they were talking about a Christian religious based book. And she said, I love the fact that even though I'm not, I don't believe in that, that your guest spoke to me and encouraged me beyond it becoming a me versus them type situation. But my guest was able to share the meaning of their book and help Kathy connect with that author and connect with the story where if, if Kathy had met that author, there would have been a little bit of pushback because she'd be like, ah, it's not for me. But once she got, once she got past the, the title of it being a Christian book or a religious book and heard the message of the book, 
she resonated with it and connected with it because the story was amazing. So I kind of look at life this way. I would rather live my life with my limited knowledge of what is to come. I would rather live my life in a way where you love and care and cherish people. You, you do all of the attributes of heaven. You live it here. And if you get to that point yeah. when you you get to your last day, and even if there is no heaven, let's just say that for a second. Even if there is no heaven, if I live my life as if there is, I have no regrets. I would rather live my life the way I see heaven to be than to live my life not like that and then find out that heaven is real and realize I missed an yeah. opportunity to live with love and care and all of the attributes that your book is talking about. And then to be able to, t to teach kids and show kids that, hey, if you care about your friends and your family, that's a good thing. If you love people, that's a good thing, right? right. So you're, you're, you're helping children understand it at a very young age. And again, like you said, with media and everything, there's so many messages coming at our children now. And like you said, you have to hover over them and kind of help yeah. filter out things that you feel serve them. So mm -hmm. in the same way, I think your book is going to help a lot of people, whether they have a religious background, faith-based, or they don't. I think what you're teaching, what you're offering is something that's going to help people be better humans, Thank you. right? Thank you. And I think that's a good thing. And I think that all children, no matter what their parents believe, no matter what they're told or taught, all children have that knowledge of heaven or God, or, and they might not even know that it's called. God. They might not put the name God on it. They might not put the name heaven on it. But all children, they all have that in them because they haven't they haven't been, you know, deceived yet or whatever. Um and so I think all children will resonate with the book. It's yeah. maybe the parents that might have a little bit of, you know, <laughs> but all children I think that they would they would be like, "Well, yes. Yes, that's that's right. That's right." You know. <laughs> And that's a that's a biblical principle too, right? That we have to have the faith of a child, right? Right? Yeah. And exactly. like, let's exactly. let's switch over to math. How's this for fun? If you tell your kids one okay. plus one is two, they go, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You tell an adult, you go to an adult and say one plus one is two. They'll be like, well, prove it to me. Like, right? <laughs> explain right. how you got to that two. You know, yeah. it's like. Why are you like that? Yeah, we're talking about common core math now. <laughs> yeah, why are you like that? You have when, to when, show your work. When, you yeah, explain how you, you have to there. explain your whole thought pattern. You know, is one plus one really two or is it three? And children are like, one plus one is two. Okay, yeah. Let's go play, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> so there's a difference there. So I think if we can capture some of that innocence, that acceptance for others, all of those things that your book is talking about mm -hmm. and apply that as adults, I think our world would be a lot different, right? Yeah. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. So can you give us the, the, kind of the idea around the characters behind your book as well? Who is this written about? Oh, this is quite interesting. It's not, it's not really written from a human perspective, really, right? Is that right? No, it's not. I didn't want it to be humans because I didn't. Okay. I have boys. And I'm obviously a girl. So the girl in me would want to write things that are princessy, but then that doesn't relate to my children. And then if I just write for my children and make it more armor and warrior -y type uh, or boys or whatever, then that eliminates girls yeah. from wanting to be in, you know? So I wanted to write about animals because. I didn't give them genders. Obviously, the mom is, she's Mama Guinea. That's her name in the book. So you know that she's the mama. The babies, I didn't give them names. I didn't give them genders. And that is the reason why. Because I want it to be a boy can read it and they can look at the guinea pigs as boys. Or a girl can read it and they can look at the guinea pigs as girls. They can be whatever they want them to be because they're not, yeah. <laughs> they're not specified in the book. And we actually owned uh, three guinea pigs. We owned a mama guinea pig and two babies. And so I wrote the book with them as the characters. 
So that was fun too. That was really fun. <laughs> they um, inspired by guinea pigs. I love it. Yes. Yeah. Well, actually, guinea pigs are so. Um, what's the word? They have so much character to them. I did not know that. Yeah. This was our yeah. first time having guinea pigs, and they are so funny. They're just like little, almost little puppies. Like they have their own little personalities, and they're like kind of spunky. And so the um. They they made my kids like so happy and my kids would make these little like homes outside and little like uh little what are those things like little tracks and stuff for the guinea pigs yeah. to go through and so when I observed because I was thinking how who am I gonna write like what kind of characters am I gonna have in this book because I knew I didn't want it to be people I was like man I don't really know like maybe I'll just use farm animals I don't really know and then just after watching my kids with these guinea pigs, I was like, oh, these guinea pigs bring so much joy to my kids. I'm going to use the guinea pigs and hopefully they'll bring joy to other kids too through the book. <laughs> and, and and actually, and what I love about that, it's a little disarming too as a reader because now you're not, you're not putting people into your story. You're putting guinea pigs. So that's, that's really quite yeah. smart actually. I love that. And again, it starts from a very innocent place. Thank you. <laughs> and that comes through in what you've written. So I love that. That's amazing. Wow. Okay. So what have you Thank learned you. about yourself as a stay-at-home mom, busy house, busy life? You also do all kinds of other stuff, horse ranch stuff. You've got all kinds of stuff going on. What have you learned about yourself becoming an author? What have you taught yourself? What do you feel like you have learned? Um. Honestly. This is something my husband has said too, that I'm, I'm very childlike in my, I'm not, I don't mean that as I'm immature. That's not what I mean. I'm very childlike in my creativity and yeah. my thinking, my process, like when it comes to creating my imagination, all of those things are very childlike. And so I think that just really came more to the forefront when writing this because as a, as a mom and like, you know, I was saying I hadn't written in forever. You kind of just forget your hobbies. You forget who you are <laughs> and you just kind of go through life. You're yeah. taking care of other people. You're the, you're on the back burner, you know? So I think writing this book just made me remember and just realize more of myself of, I'm I'm like this little kid still. I still have that little kid inside of me. And that little kid is actually really good at creativity and being um artistic and expressing love in a way that's so pure and so genuine and like I've carried her all throughout my life and writing this book just kind of pushed her forward to the front a little bit more to make me see myself I guess a little bit different, <laughs> not different, but just, oh, yeah. that's where that comes from. Or like, oh, like how the Bible says, I brought it up. You know, the Bible says to be childlike. And I do feel very childlike. And I don't mean that, like I said, mm -hmm. I don't mean it in a way of immaturity or irresponsible, but it is, I do have just like a childlikeness to me that I think was just really made aware to me through writing this book. And I'm happy about it. I love that. <laughs> okay, so I mentioned Kathy that I work with, and again, she'll be she'll be so happy to hear her name in the podcast. She always she always comes by and gives me a little punch <laughs> in the arm, like you said my name. Um, <laughs> from your perspective to Kathy again, the one I mentioned earlier, what would you say to Kathy about buying your book? If she's thinking about purchasing your book and she's ready to to click the buy now button, but she's like, ah, uh, I don't know if I'm going to enjoy this book, or I don't know if it's for me. What would you say to Kathy specifically? And I will see her at work later on, so mm -hmm. I will have a, we'll have more conversation about your thoughts. But what would you say to Kathy about this book and how it can help her and her family? I would say that this is a really good book for creating moments with your kids. I wrote this book with the intentions of parents or siblings, you know, older siblings or guardians, grandparents reading it with the children, not a book that the child reads on their own. I, I wrote it really with the intention of it being like a family come together. We're going to read a bedtime story or a, a story before nap time. We're going to create this moment. 
I feel that's very important. I always did that with my kids when they were younger and I still read to them now. I think it's so important that you create those little, even if it's just five minutes of that little closeness, that little, let's read a good book that has a good message that will hopefully plant some good seeds inside of you that you can carry, that you can think on, that you can water, that we can nurture and grow in you. And um, yeah, so that that's honestly the word that I would use to encapsulate it would just be precious. I think that this book carries a preciousness with it that I want other mm. families to experience. I want to that I want them to experience that little precious moment with your children and you're reading good purity to them. And it's and I think the children like well my children especially they just they absorb everything and they just especially with this book I just see them light up. They really absorb it. They really enjoy it. And it's not um it's not your typical religious book and and I I purposefully wrote it from that point of view. I didn't want it to be like your typical we're going to put bible verses in here and things like that because I I don't want it to feel religious. I want it to feel more like a relationship, if that makes sense. That you have this inherited relationship with this father who put all wonderful good things around you that you don't have to die to, we don't have to wait to die to go to heaven to experience all the things that he already died to give us here on earth while we are yeah. living. <laughs> so I don't know that, that that's, I guess in a nutshell, what I would say, there's just a preciousness in my opinion. And maybe I'm being biased that this book carries that I want other families to experience. I love hearing about books from the author directly. Because when you pick up the copy of the book, whether you're at a store or you're on shopping online and you're looking at this cover, you're like, I don't know anything about this author. I don't know if I'm going to enjoy this. And that's why being on a podcast like this, yeah. you get to hear your heart. You get to see you. And for those that are listening and those that are watching, for, for those that are watching, you're going to know that through this entire podcast, my guest has been smiling like ear to ear the whole time that she's talking. It's great. But you, as you're listening, I don't know. Listen, I'm a little bit. No, but as you're listening, you can actually hear smiles. I don't know if you know that. Oh, well, that's awesome. But you can actually hear, you can hear joy in people's voice. And it's something that I always can tell when somebody is happy and genuinely cares and loves what they do and their topic because you can hear the smile. So whether you're watching, or listening, you can you know, this is an author that you can trust. This is a book that you can get for your family, and you're really going to enjoy this. So well, that was very. I'm sweet. so happy that you have time. I'm so happy you have time to talk to me. Of really. course, I'm so happy to be a guest. I'm so honored. So again, I'm going to go back to that video that I talked about. I would. I'm going to encourage you to watch the official video from Stephen Kirsch Chapman, Heaven in the Real <laughs> World, because it okay. adds a visual component now to what you've already heard. You've heard the okay. words. I'm glad you did that. But there's some visuals yeah. in that video, the original video. I mean, actually, for those that are listening or watching, I'm going to put a link in our show notes and stuff so they can actually watch what I'm talking about to you. But if you watch the official video for that for that song, I think it's going to give you one yeah. more layer that reinforces the story behind your book. Well, yeah, absolutely. and I think there's just this, there's a little marriage here between what you've written and what this song means to me. And I can just, again, the whole time we're talking, it's like, I feel like I'm getting hit with, oh, talk about the song, talk about the book, talk about the song, talk about the book. So it goes hand in hand. And I really love that. So. That's awesome. Yeah, I'll definitely watch the actual video now. And I'll put the visuals with the words and we'll get the whole, we'll get the whole combination together. Get it rocking and rolling. Thank you again for making time for me. What is the best way for people to find the book? And if they had a question for you, how do they reach out to you and say, hey, I'm looking for a great illustrator. Can you send me that person's name? Or I have to, I'm writing a children's book and I need some inspiration. I'd love to talk to you. How do people find the book? A and B, how do they contact you? Well, to find the book, I'm on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Um, okay. I'm on some other little bookstores. If you Google the book title, you'll find it in like some other random places, but the main ones are Amazon and Barnes and Noble. 
Um, if you want to get in contact with me personally, I don't have, I don't use any other social media except for True Social right now. Good. And you can find me on True Social at Sprouting Eden. So that's okay. the name of my series that I'm going to title all of my books or all of my creations, all my work from here on out will be Sprouting Eden. Wait, 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 wait. You said, se- you said series, like more books are coming? Yes. Absolutely. They're not going to be. Oh, see? <laughs> it's not going to be like, Yay. what does heaven look like part two or anything like that? I just, I have some books yeah. that yeah, are yeah. already written that are ready to go. Um, they're not published yet. They haven't been illustrated yet, but they would not be considered religious books at all, but they still follow the same underlying, uh, like nature of wanting innocence and purity and just goodness and wholesomeness for our children and also instill in the heart and nature of God. You know, it doesn't have to be you give Bible verses and you preach to them. It can just be a simple, fun story that all children can enjoy that still carry the same nature. They still encapsulate that same value of what I'm trying to get across to kids. So yes, there is more coming. And it will all be labeled a Sprouting Eden series. So like I said, on True Social, you can find me at Sprouting Eden. You might be able to search my name, Airy Field. Nice. It might come up the same, but my name okay. is Sprouting Eden on there. Oh, also, um, until December 31st, a dollar from every copy sold will go to Operation Underground Railroad to help fight and end sex trafficking. Especially, they do the majority of their work is rescuing children that have been sex trafficked so that's an organization that i learned about a few years ago and i just i'm completely thankful to them for the work that they are doing and i've donated personally to them i just can't say enough good things about them so i wanted to do more and so yeah i'm doing this little operation christmas of if you buy a copy until December 31st, a dollar from every copy goes to Operation Underground Railroad. And that's about 50% of my profit. I mean, you don't make a lot when you're a self-published author, I'm telling you. <laughs> wow. Oh. No, I know. So we'll put links in the show notes for that as well. That's a great organization to support beyond the end of the year. It's continuing. Oh, yeah. They're amazing. And even if you don't buy a copy of the book, even if you don't get a copy of the book, I encourage you. Them. To yeah. support that Operation Underground Railroad. Yeah, all there. So when we think, before we, go, before we close off, I just want to just mention this. When we think of like a concert or going to church and there's a big platform, a big stage, right? And there's someone up on that stage and they're singing or performing or speaking or teaching. And we all gather around and listen to the person on the platform, right? On the stage. You've built your own stage with this book. You've built your own platform. And now you can climb up onto that platform and now use the book and leverage your writing to now speak in a setting like this or in other settings where you can now speak your message because you have a book. You've now opened the door for people to hear your message that you might never have had if you'd never had a book, right? Who would have known? Who would have heard your message? Who would have heard this conversation had you not had a book, right? So you are creating your own platform now That's true, yeah. to leverage the book and now speak to people in public, whether it's a small little bookstore, it's a podcast with some guy in Canada. Um, you're creating this stage, this platform for mm-hmm. yourself. So I'm excited to see what you're going to use this stage for and how you're going to take this platform and reach more people because you have a book. So congratulations on being a published author. Hold it up again, please. Hold it up again. Got to see it. Got to see it. There you go. (laughs) Yes. And to your illustrator. I I I did that. (laughs) Your illustrator, again, beautiful work. We'll put links to all her name, that name, and everybody so you can contact them as well. But um, thank you so much for being part of the podcast. I felt like we've had a great conversation. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to the next time you come back. Yes, sir. And update us on on the next book. You okay with that? Yeah. And to all the guinea pigs out there in the world, we love you. Thank you. (laughs) Thanks for being part of the podcast. Thank you so much. All right. 
Some people don't listen all the way to the end, so you right now, let's, let's just you and me for a second here. I really appreciate you being part of the podcast. Really. Most people skip over stuff like this, but you, no, no, you listen. So for you, I would love to talk to you directly. I would. On our website, livingthenextchapter.com, you can actually book time. I said book. <laughs> book time with me. That's funny. And we can actually have a conversation. And I would love to sit and talk with you on Zoom or we can talk on Instagram. We can do whatever you want to do. But let's let's talk to each other. I would love to get your feedback on the podcast. I would love to hear what you like and how we can serve you better. Livingthenextchapter.com I'd like to talk to you. You're still here. I would like to talk to you. Livingthenextchapter.com See you there.